Hello? Oh, Miss Arwell. Thank you for calling. I take it the books have arrived. Yes, well, I know it's, it's, it's quite the collection. Think nothing of it. No, no, it's, uh, it's better there with you. I have no intention of going to South America again. Never again. Well, goodbye then. Ah, Bert, Bertie, have you seen Annabelle? I haven't seen her all day. Uh, I believe she went to check something in the attic. She heard some noise. Thought it might be a, a rat or worse raccoons. You want I should go check on her, sir? Would you? That would be awfully kind. Thank you, Bertie. Bertie, be careful up there. Of course, sir. <laughs> Don't worry, I know this old house like the back of my hand. Previously on the Cracked and Crooked Mans. Well, there was a horrible murder at that house. It spooked people, you know. Listen, out of towner. I'm the law here, and I can tell you the Dodge Brothers asked me to look at that house. The feller ain't there. There appears to be a lot of uh, plant growth, but absolutely no animal life. <laughs> well, I'm just jumping at shadows, gentlemen. Gentlemen? And just reach out and touch the book that you feel drawn to. But your other hand makes contact with something unnatural. So I back up right to the banister, and um, I go for, rather than the casual thing, I go for a Sparta kick. The walls seem to shift. As he's saying this, I realize that I'm thinking about the vines that seemed to come from the subterranean location. As soon as you start speaking, you look up the stairs, and on the top of the landing is the silhouette of possibly a man holding a gun. You hold it right there. Uh, I want to shout, shout up, um, Sheriff Whitford, it's us. We spoke earlier. I know it's you, dumbass. Well, uh, <laughs> you fancy putting that gun, da- gun away so we can talk? I, you knew we were coming What's up here. What's going on in, what's going on in here? Well, we're, we're carrying out, uh, well, we're, we're doing our job as, uh, put to us by the Dodge Brothers. We're, uh, checking... Yes. Smashing up the stairs. We are, we are conducting an investigation. Mm. We didn't smash nothing up. Uh, there was, uh, I mean, you can see the place is rotten. There's so much water damage. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> luckily our friend here is fine, but he, he uh, fell through. It was rotting away. And uh, yeah, very, uh, very lucky he didn't hurt himself. It is a serious public health hazard. Well, that's why I don't like members of the public getting in here. I don't know much about the law, Sheriff, but, um, and I say this actually, and I can't cast a glance to Palmer very deliberately. Uh, but, uh, might we ask what you're doing here? Were you also asked by the Dodge brothers to investigate? It's my duty to make sure people in this town are safe. To keep yeah, peace. Absolutely. Exactly. And we're looking for someone who's missing. Are you looking for someone who's missing too? I'm just here to make sure you're not up to any no good. Mr. Palmer, forgive me, Mr. Palmer, but would this count as a sort of an obstacle to our purpose here? Well, no, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, Are you sure about that, Mr. Palmer? Because I don't know, and I'd be in your hands on this matter. Are you saying that loud enough that he can hear as well? I suppose she's dropping her voice slightly on right. that point. But, <laughs> I was but just yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a cards all on the table kind of gal. Yeah. Woman. Um, what I'd like to do is sort of... Uh, hands in the air obviously just step out to the bottom of the stairs and say uh now uh hey we're, we're on the same side here we we're not going to cause you any trouble um you can help us look around if if you like but we're almost done here we haven't seen anything so uh we'll be on our way soon anyway really you got through it all that quick huh or was it just there was nothing left of value oh i think there's some stuff of value i uh there's a room upstairs that seemed to have some valuable things in, but uh, that's not our interest. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, looks like someone's kicked the door off its hinges. Yeah, I mean, drifters often don't know the wealth of things they don't understand, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, I... Um... 
<laughs> yeah. I want to do a psychology roll on him, really. Is that yeah. allowable? Because Yeah, yeah, but I think I'll also need a fast talk roll. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my fast talk is the bullshitting about the door. Hey, you know, but uh, our only business here, surely that shows you is... Uh, <laughs> it's... Um, well, in that case, I'd, I'd accept um, a persuade instead of fast talk. My persuade's slightly better, so I might go persuade. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, ooh, 12 on a 61 persuade. Ooh, okay. So, extreme yes. success. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, by all means, a psychology role. Yeah. What are you trying to find out? Well, I, I want to see... Obviously, he's at the top of the stairs, it's dimly lit and everything, but I want to just see if I can tell by his tone of voice whether there's an implicit threat or he can be one round. Um, mm, okay. Do you know what I mean? He. Uh, yeah. I want to sort of know if he's here to antagonise or threaten or he's mm. ge- being genuine when he says... What are you doing smashing the place up? I knew you'd be trouble, you know? Um, yeah. And that's a fail. Not a fumble. Um, I can't tell, I suppose. Well, his face remains completely set. Mm. So you're not sure what he's really about still. But he says... Um, he, he sort of seems a little bit more thoughtful momentarily after you've sort of made made your argument. And he, um, he says, well, listen, I guess if... Uh, if you're not robbing the place blind, I'd just like to make sure that there's going to be no more broken doors or broken banisters or smashed glass. Absolutely. Um. All right, then. Well, listen, I um, I took the liberty of popping into Haggerty's boarding house. They said you never checked in, so I presume you're staying here the night. Well, uh, <laughs> hopefully it won't come to that. Uh, we've, there's not that many more rooms to look through. Uh, we were... I think planning on driving back and perhaps staying the night there tonight, yeah? So. Well, just in case, I brought you some food in case you get stuck here. Oh. Ah, well, much it obliged. Starts coming down the stairs. Very kind. I have a, a question, if you don't mind. Um, Shoot. What time did you arrive? How long have you been here in the house? I arrived about ten minutes ago, why? Could I do a psychology or a check on that to see whether he really did? I think I might join that party. <laughs> I mean, maybe we all should. Is he telling the truth? I, I just failed mine, so I feel it might be a bit cheeky. But That's a, just a regular success on my psychology. Well, mine is a hard success. Might not have been exactly ten minutes, but yeah, <laughs> recent. He hasn't been, he hasn't been like lying in wait in the house all day. 45 minutes. No. <laughs> You get the impression as well that if, if he'd been here earlier, he might have intervened. Hmm. Um, yeah. In fact, you get the sense that he's only upstairs because he was looking for where you were. Right. Right. That's good to know, yeah. Um, so as he walks down the stairs, there's no, like... He's got feet, right? It's not tentacles or... Yeah. In fact, he seems um, he seems quite keen to leave. <laughs> yeah. Well, who can blame him? Um, so he walks to the front door. He walks straight past you to the front door and he says, uh, I'll be two minutes. Uh feel free to carry on I'll, I guess I'll leave I'll leave some things in the kitchen for you ah much obliged um did he tell us why he'd um why he was here why he'd come was it just to check in on us that's what he said that's what he implied anyway hmm. Swid said we were coming up this way so I guess that checks out um it makes sense for a vengeful cop right because that's what we've kind of got him down as he does seem to be thus far he seems to be kind of what he says he is on that point, Damien goes over to Palmer, just behind Palmer. How tall are you? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, size 60. Oh, yeah, I'm saying uh, no slouch. Like, yeah. And build is probably quite... You're quite stocky, aren't you? Yeah, he's pretty, you know, muscular. But she's still towering above you by about six inches. Oh, yeah. So, 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 she, <laughs> so she, leans, she leans down to your ear and just says, doesn't he need a wand or something? Or have I watched too many uh, talkies? A wand? Like a wizard? I said a warrant. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't make me say this again. He'll hear us. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Does he actually say a wand like a wizard? Because I will roll a cult. And my whole opinion <laughs> of Palmer will change. <laughs> and we'll suddenly be playing D&D. Because um, there, no, there was old Wizard Oakley down by the marshes. He was up to no good. There's a good question. Do you do you know? I don't know what your knowledge of. I've whispered is. this. He'd have to do a listen check to hear. Sorry, it. sorry. No, my I should roll for that actually because I've got some law. Just I'm like pimping that. you out. I mean, I'm pimping I, you I out. Was, yeah, I think I was just assuming as me that 
the sheriff's sort of got the you know ability to sure, oh, sure. do what they want. But sure, is it worth rolling law, Dom? If you want to. I mean, you are a union man. Yeah, 11 on a 30 law. Sweet. Um, law's not. I mean, me as the keeper, not too sure about this, but yeah. I guess uh, that uh, it's not actually your house. And he probably he might have the permission of the Dodge Brothers to come down here. Mm. He's certainly been down here on their behest before, so right, yeah. Um, uh, and he's not he's not actually impeding you. He's not stopping you. True. Um, he was just he's actually by the looks of things he's put this gruff front on. But in terms of his actions, speaking louder than his words, what he's done is yeah. you're okay and brought you some food. That was the yeah. softener, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. In in a sense, it feels like perhaps he's glad we're doing the job that he's too scared to. Possibly. You know? Um, okay. Well, my, my instinct as Dannon is to immediately go to a window and spy on what he's doing outside. But I'm not going to do that because I don't think Sebastian is that suspicious anymore. So I think I say, <laughs> um, well, uh, shall we um, check on a couple more of these rooms we haven't looked in yet? Why don't we check these doors directly opposite? Well, those two are saying that Damien is moving over to window to see what this guy's doing as he's leaving. Aha. Okay. Uh, so by the door directly opposite, you mean... The ones to the... So there's two doors to the south of the dining room. Uh, let's go for the one nearest the front door. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm only doing that while they're talking. I'm not doing that instead of going to join them. Yeah. But which which window are you going to? The nearest one. Nearest one. Uh, so you'd, you'd probably have to go th- into the room they're going into anyway. Right, nice. Look through that window. Nice. Um, so, in which case, uh, let's see. You walk into a small but well-furnished study. It's it's quite cosy in here. Um, the damp is perhaps not quite as bad as everywhere else. There's, you know, there's a wing-back chair, a standing lamp, um, bookcase, of, um, you know, there's a roll-top desk, sort of writing desk, bureau, whatever. Um... And uh, in fact, there's a there's a book open on it. It looks like uh, it looks a bit knackered. Actually, the book on on the desk. I I'd, I'd like to go straight to the book on the desk, unless anyone else gets there first. No, I think if that's where you're headed, I'm probably just sort of scanning in general. Um, I'm scanning. I'm scanning the room. Yeah, I might do a little spot hidden just to see if there's yeah uh, yeah spot hidden appropriate for for the other two of us. What are you looking for? I'm kind of try and see if because i still have this thing in my head that it's possible vagrants or um hobos have used this place um you know it's odd for a huge house not to have some visitors as it were so and since this place seem this room seems slightly less damp perhaps Mm -hmm. it's a good candidate for where so i'm scanning to see if there's any signs of recent activity basically I still mm. don't want to be jumped out at with a chair leg, you know. And I'm narrowing my eyes, and I'm 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 looking for, I'm looking for that fountain pen I've just laid my eyes on. Uh, yeah. And I walk over to it and I put it in my pocket. Huh. I am. Um, it's I... a very nice fountain pen. Well, I, I do study it and then I put it in my pocket. Um, and Seb Palmer, you, are you going to do a spot hidden? Are you? Yeah, I just failed it though. Um, well, it doesn't look like this. It doesn't look like this room's been disturbed at all no uh and out the window uh you can see um once you open the shutter mm. you can see through the vine leaves the uh, the creeping ivy that's dangling down the window you can see sheriff whitford walking to his car he's parked it facing yours on the driveway um he opens the passenger door and he takes out two small brown bags um and he brings them into the house you can hear the door go I think I'll come, um, come back out of the room to meet him in the atrium or whatever that mm. big hall is. The he night. says, oh, here you go. Thank you. Much Hope obliged. you like ham sandwiches. Oh, I love them. Just like uh, mm. mother used to make, yeah? Um, well, I mean, you're welcome to join us if, if that's your your thing, but I'm sure you're, you're busy Um <laughs> You're welcome. Mate. His eyes sort of scan the house, and then he says, uh, "I got a lot on down at the uh, down at the station, so mm. I should get on." No, I'm sure. Well, uh, good day to you, and uh, I'm sure we'll bump into each other again tonight or tomorrow. Um, we'll we'll call in and let you know if we find anything. Obviously, yeah, you keep me informed. We'll do. Thank you, officer. 
Good luck. And he leaves. A few moments later, you hear his car start. And it... Bum, 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 bum. It blows up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he drives off. Mm, I regret not making better friends with him. Mm. Oh, well. Maybe next I think time. I was just relieved he wasn't a possessed fiend and then just let our best ally disappear. But we've got ham sandwiches. Mm. Uh, so, so um, at that point, I think... Um, what time is go it? Go into the, the... Oh, yeah. It's um, so it's probably about five. So it'll still be getting dark relatively soon because we're January, right? Mm. February. Gen- yeah. Oh, February, yeah. Or uh, four. Let's say it's four. Four o'clock. Okay, cool. Um, I'm happy to keep searching these rooms. Um, I might eat a ham sandwich and uh, <laughs> wander to the next room on the right. Who uh, Was the doctor, you were looking at the book, were you? Please. So you see that it is... Um, the Missing People, The Tribe That the Jungle Swallowed by Thomas Pratt. Oh. Um, I think I asked for it in the library when it was first mentioned by Susan Arwell. But, I, yeah, I will accept another anthropology role. You might have done one before on, on this subject. But. Tribes That the Jungle Swallowed. Yes, I think I was somewhat preoccupied in the library. Maybe I did not get a conversation with the librarian, but now it's in front of me. It comes it comes back to me. That it does not come back to me. <laughs> but if something if I struggle to remember something, there's really a few options I can take. And one of them is uh well many of them are chemical. Uh <laughs> and um I go into my bag and uh, see what I can find in terms of... I'll go ketamine. Prescription. <laughs> Imagine you rolling it out like, you know, one of those, like, it's all needles. Medication. <laughs> I think... Um, Don't know what this one is. Something that sort of opens opens the doors to perception a little. Oh, masculine. Know, maybe... Johnny masculine ayahuasca. Yeah, I don't know. Is he like? Is he like? He's a masculine or ayahuasca? <laughs> I mean, oh, ayahuasca maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure ear is wise actually. It's going on a fucking spirit journey. Does laudanum have a mild um, hallucinogenic effect? Or does it just knock yeah. you out? Yeah, no, it does. Well, it's liquid opium, I mean, isn't it? Essentially, back then, absinthe still had hallucinogenic effects because they had the yeah, wormwood. Wormwood in it. Yeah, okay, so he's going to go. He's going to go for the laudanum, which how, made, how it, cutting, made a mistake. How cutting edge are you? Or are in you, terms of my yeah, in terms of your practice, are you really right on the brink of genius? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fucked up. Um, Nineteen nineteen uh, mescaline uh, has been uh, become common use. Eighteen ninety six discovery. Oh. Yeah, pe- pe- peyote. Okay. okay, well then, thanks, in, thanks in. Thanks to that. I Thanks think maybe he does have a little bit of mescaline in his case. <laughs> he's got a whole load of things that might help. How would I how would I how would I ingest mescaline in nineteen twenty five? Would you have it in paper form? Like they do sort of L S D tests? Or like a little like a or would you have a file of the liquid? Like a drop? Yeah, it might be like a tea a tea pipette. I think he might yeah. take a he might just put a under drop of it under the tongue. Yeah. Oh right, you're right. They get right back back in there in the saliva glands. Yeah. That little that's what bitter you want. kick, <laughs> yeah. bitter, slightly funky kick. I assume. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't and, possibly. <laughs> and uh, and I have another look at this book. I just stare at it. Just stare at the name on the cover, and wait. Oh. And speak to me. Fucking do that. <laughs> oh, that's a really bad fail. That's a shame. That's bad luck. Because I mean, my anthropology is quite good. It could that. be worse if you fumble a mescaline roll. I've heard bad things can happen. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not a fumble. <laughs> but it is a failure on a pushed roll. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot mm. it was pushed. <laughs> You're still sane though, right? Um, well, currently. <laughs> this is you sane. Um, yeah, I am. I've lost quite a bit of sanity, but just one point at a time, so I'm okay. Oh, that's fine then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just light of descent. You're looking at this book and you're thinking, Pratt, Pratt, Thomas Pratt, where have you heard that? You start to remember um, a lecture about him, uh, he, him coming up in a lecture at some point, and someone poo pooing him because he's on the very fringes of what is accepted science. Ah, a man after my own heart. Heart, heart. Indeed. A man after my own. I can't do, I can't say that word in a German accent. 
a man after my own heart. That was good. <laughs> Use that one. <laughs> and just as you think that, you look up and uh, you think you see through the window. Um, um, Seb Palmer, you can hear you can hear him. Uh, he, he's been outside talking to Whitford. You see Whitford get in his car and, and drive off. Um, Rose is turning away from the window as this happens, and you happen to look up, and between two trees, uh, in the distance, sort of away to one corner, the very edge of what you can see through the window, you see a figure crossing the garden. Um, he's in a blue... Uh, what looks to be a military uniform... He's carrying something long over his shoulder. Oh, fuck. And it just disappears behind the trees. Who was it that saw that? Johannes? Yeah. Something long over his shoulder? That's a horrible description. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A sort of... Looked a bit like an axe. Thought it might. And actually looked exactly like whatever that thing was that attacked you in the library. Could I do... Could I do an intelligence roll? No, could I do a sanity roll? Could I do some more mescaline? Could I do a sanity roll to find out whether I whether I realise that is a hallucination brought on? Is that fair? Because it was pushed? Yes. Yeah, whether well, I was going to ask for a sanity roll anyway on the back oh. of that. So, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so if, you, if you... I mean, literally, I'm, I'm going to send some words in the chat. Or we'll just carry on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sanity roll because he's just seen an apparition that attacked him in the library. <laughs> But but I know I've just taken some mescaline. I'm going to do the sanity yeah, roll. But, yeah, but I mean it's academic because I just rolled a 97. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, there it is. Um, how much uh, how much sanity are you, are you on at the moment? I'm on 52. 52. <sighs> close. Very close. Yeah, it's too close, close. really. Too close to. Um, it. Well, you lose a sanity point, um, and uh, what Rose witnesses is. Um, Dr. Bergman suddenly leaps to his feet and screams, Pratt! Pratt! Out the window and then seems to control himself again. I come back in. And without speaking, he just sits back down and looks at the book <laughs> as if he hadn't even noticed he'd done it. I think she le- I think instinctively, instinctively I leap away into the corner of the room <laughs> as far as I can get using my grand jeté. <laughs> um... Exactly, and I think my, my arms are up. Slightly insect-like length yeah. of limb. I come back into the room and you're just pinned to the ceiling corner. And I, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I'm sort of staring at him in horror. Nice. And I say, as you're coming through the door, I say, I think, I think the doctor might be on to something. I mean, he's certainly on something. Yeah. Hey, Doc, you, uh, you find anything interesting? Oh, uh, the book is um, Im- 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 impenetrable, but I'm slightly concerned about the man who has been following us. Oh, the the policeman? No, no. Um, uh, the man in um, uh, army uniform. Yeah, this is the first I'm hearing of it. Can I do a psychology check yeah. on this statement? Does, is he telling the truth, or is he... Um, Making something up. That is a good pass. Nothing great. Um, he seems to believe what he's saying, but you also detect that he's possibly... Um, Medicated. Uh, over-medicated. Yeah, he's, he's on something, right? Is that uh, the fellow you were shouting at? Pratt? Well, I'm not entirely sure whether it's Pratt. I don't know whether he was an army man himself, but um, he has something to do with it. There's no doubt about that. What sort, of, blue, what sort of uniform? It was, uh, was it like a, like a Civil War uniform? uniform? Yeah. It was a, a blue Civil War uniform. Oh, Yankees. Hmm. Well, yes. at least they were on the right side. Well, yeah. Well, well yes. Car- carrying something uh, large over his shoulder. Um, I thought I saw him in the library earlier today and, and dismissed it as um, some sort of... Uh, vision, uh, but to see him again outside the house, well, mm. I wonder whether we should well, go in chase or just be aware that he is out there tracking us, perhaps, and be on our guard. I'm going to do a psychology roll as well at this point. <laughs> um, that is a seven on a f- uh, 45, so that's an extreme success. 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's on something. Yeah. Okay. I've seen this. I think I've seen not this, but I've seen people like high on fumes working like glue factories and shit like that. It's clear his like the way he's talking is just off. Like, and mm. I think it's substance. Um, okay, dark. Um, well, hey, we'll keep our wits about us, right? Um, this is it. This is all just to keep our wits. And if you see this yeah, yeah. strange fellow in the, the blue uniform with carrying a large... Yeah, absolutely. Like, ...some sort of weapon. Wait a, well, mo- wait, a mo- wait a moment. Wait a moment, gentlemen. Didn't didn't Cohen, didn't Cohen's uh, reign of this place end around the time of the end of the Civil War? Wasn't it... Uh, let me see here. I recall that didn't someone mention August sixteenth, eighteen sixty-five? Isn't that around the time of the end of the Civil War? My history isn't terribly good in terms of dates. I don't have to focus on that sort of thing. And no, my American history is also very poor, very, very. Poor. Well, that's understandable, Doctor. You're not from our country. No. L- luckily, Mister Palmer will be able to tell us in a moment. I'm sure. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, I, that sounds about Irish. I, I, I mean, I'm Irish. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Irish American. Same thing, huh? Uh, I well, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I think you're right in terms of dates, but uh, I can't I can't remember being told when the Kerwins reign ended. As you say, they said about thirty years ago, the Kerwins met their fate, and then was it sixty years ago? The uh, it was the Fitzgerald murder was the in Fitzgerald. yes, the Fitzgerald right. murders were in 1865, and then yeah. Kerwin was nine, 1895. Mm, but I expect this fellow who I have seen out on two occasions is um, maybe some um, military reenactment participant. Mm. Well, you get all sorts. Uh, well, uh, I tell you what, if he's a military reenactment fella, makes sense he's hanging around here. Just don't, uh, don't get too trigger happy, huh? I, I'm not so convinced. The doctor here has been in touch with forces beyond our understanding. We take a moment. We take a moment, gentlemen. Hmm. Well, okay. In the dance, you don't ask a question when the gods bless you with an insight. Huh. You can see, ins- you can seem insane to others when they're watching, but sometimes you gotta grasp that. Otherwise, you ain't gonna dance the true dance. You understand me? You have to give yourself over to the insight. This is very true. Uh, yeah. And uh, Sebastian, you have had experience of this just a short hour ago when you discovered the scroll in the library you had to give yourself over didn't you i'm not saying this place is haunted but holy hell if there was a place that seems haunted it is this place now what if just what if the doctor's forgive me doctor hallucination is actually an insight to a place just beyond our own well they used to talk of this back where i came from there were Certain individuals, mostly old women in the community, who used to have an ability to be able to see beyond the veil, as my mama used to call it. Uh, as this is happening, I just get out my rosaries and uh, <laughs> start. Well, exactly. Thumbing them. <laughs> do they? Do they? Do they look valuable? The rosary beads. Yeah. Are they? They're black wood. Just black wood. A uh, little silver on the cross, but nothing like. I, I, I think. I think you both see a gleam. Cross Rosalie Damien's eyes, and then she sort of shakes it off slightly <laughs> with a toss of her crazy hair. I finish. I finish my hail mary and put them away. That's such a weird image of this woman. Uh, now you are you are talking my language, uh, Miss Damien. Um, now, obviously, as I've said on numerous occasions, I I do not believe there are such a thing as ghosts, but certainly there are energies, and uh, the human mind may harness. Uh, hitherto untapped resources to see beyond what uh, the, the normal uh, human comprehends. Perhaps, perhaps I have been stimulated to see, as you say, beyond this plane. Maybe I should take a little bit more, and I take my little pipette out. Oh, Christ! <laughs> I, I, as he says, as if it's all the same to you. I lunge forward, grab his arm. And I say, it may easily have been the pain, Doctor. I've known girls dance the best dances of their lives. They take their shoes off and their feet are bleeding. One of them even broke toes. And it seemed to give us something. You fell off a staircase, Doctor. It might have, might have snapped something open in your senses. Combined with this, if it's all right with you, I'll just still be holding his arm. But if you're going to... Yes. 
pull. Yes, you make a very good point. I put the pipette down. Is there a letter opener on the desk? Uh, give me a letter. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. I really hope he passes this. Keep this man away I from a sharp object. Pass my luck. <laughs> yeah, pass my luck. Yeah, there's a nice. Um, it's a nice pewter. That it's in the shape of a of a short sword. I grab it and jab it through my hand. Fuck. And, I, so, and I'm def- I'm so horrified that I definitely don't react in time. Uh, I want to lunge forwards. A grab the pipette, the jar of that shit, and stick it in my pocket, and then sort of try and just keep him in one place, uh, like one hand on his hand that's stabbed, and one hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Going, uh, Doc, Doc, what the hell are you doing, man? You've you stabbed yourself through the hand. You, is it, <laughs> would you like put it to the table or something? Like, uh, uh, Doc, so you Doc. lose it. You lose a hit point. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell! Oh, it's maybe as she says, the pain that helps me see. Uh, no, just yet- stay still. Stay still. Okay, I'm gonna pull it out slowly. Okay. Um, All right. Miss Miss Demien, have you got some fabric, something to bandage up this uh, dark? Surely you got something in your bag? Yes, no, no, allow me. And, and she... I'm not that kind of doctor. <laughs> yeah, she she starts ripping, she rips some of the lining out of this jacket that she's already ostensibly stolen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, dark, three, two, one. And I want to ah. pull it out. Quick, now, now, rap, rap. Uh, I, I will start applying first aid. Freestyle rap. Oh, um, we find ourselves in a terrible castle. <laughs> Not a castle, really. It's actually a house. <laughs> That's <been> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have a freestyle rap in every episode. Mm, um, it wasn't even a rap. <laughs> it's literally in the school of night. That is the worst thing they call me on sometimes, and I fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first aid, on the other hand, I have a classic 33%, Dominic, keeper of the manse of, of Mansions of Madness. It's not bad odds. Uh, and actually, I've rolled a 0-4. It's my best roll of the night. Amazing. Well, you get your hit point back. While while he's um, being administered this uh, medical treatment, um, mm. can I, I... I mean, I'm doing... I'm damage control in my head. I've pocketed that masculine stuff. Um is his bag nearby? A, I want to see if I can see where his gun is. If it's not on him, is it in his bag or is it in a holster or is it tucked into his belt? And B, like, is there any more drugs that I can... You know, while he's distracted, having his hand bandaged up and everything, I want to, like, take as much danger out of his hands as possible. Uh, well, I don't know where his gun is. Um, is it in the bag or is it no, in your purse? No, that's, that's on me. Cool. Where, well, like, tucked into your belt. Like a gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 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 is it or is it? In, I think it might be in just in a pocket. I think it might just be in my pocket. Jacket pocket. Okay. In which yeah. case, I'll I won't try and take that off you because it might cause more harm than good. Um, but I will pocket any more drugs if there's that roll of like drugs that need. There's quite a lot in there. It's like a whole sort of doctor's bag of. <sighs> okay, I think I see that, and I'm like, okay, fuck it. I've uh, you know I can't pocket all this. I'll just keep an eye on him. Um, so I've just got the mescaline, but the rest of it, I guess, is still there. Um, um, fine. Uh, I mean, you can you can take it. I think I'm probably distracted by the pain, so I think yeah. You can probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Madam Damien, uh, how's he looking? Does he need a? He'll need stitches, I'm sure. Won't you, Johannes? Fucking hell. No, I'm no, it's. Um, I I think it's superficial, R- right, R- Rose? Uh, I believe so. Went through his hand. Of course it did, yes. Uh, 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 I, I hope that it's something that you can recover from, Doctor. Of course. Uh, do you do you feel that you can? Uh, do you feel that you can use it? Well, no uh, tendons I, or ligaments I, cut. I f- use use the hand or use the pain. Harness the pain, as you say. Let's focus on the hand. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose we do mean the hand to start. I I I think the hand still has. I expect as the full range of movement. And I, but I um, run over to the window to see um, if I uh, let let me see if uh, this has, as you say, the pain has enlightened me in any way. Um, can I just say, if he's running to the window, I'm immediately going to try and grab him. Oh, not running. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
because I'm assuming you're going to headbutt the glass. But okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm just moving to the window to have a, to have a look out the window to see if I can see this figure again. Okay. Mm. Is it fair to say that as as you move, not in a running manner, but in a certain kind of inspired fashion, the two of us shadow you, <laughs> and we just sort of yeah go towards the window with you either side. I, I do let go of your hand slightly reluctantly. Hands off I, was, I was thinking about sticking my thumb in the wound yeah. and seeing if it would have any effect, but now I'm going to ditch that because you seem to be um, perfectly willing on your own. So. You see no sign of this figure. Ah, well, now I must confess I feel a little foolish and I <laughs> take out my hip flask and just take a little sip of vodka and put it away again mm. and light a cigarette. Did you want to read this book, by the way? Do you do you read the book? <laughs> it's not ready yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not that I'm trying to shepherd you in any way. <laughs> I, I just I, uh, maybe didn't draw enough attention to it earlier. No, I suppose I might um, eventually find my way back to the desk and uh, um, and pick up the book again. I'll tell I'll tell you this. It's um, it's. It's in very poor condition. Um, well, Tom. You can see in the front, it's got Arthur Cornthwaite's name written in it. It also has a stamp Mr. from Oaks. the Gamwell Library that looks more recent. Yeah. Um, the uh, the binding is cracked. Um, it's covered in odd stains. Um, some of the pages are actually a bit loose. Um, it looks like it's been, you know, read over and over again quite thoroughly. Uh, now... If you want to skim it, I'd need an, an English language roll. Um, alternatively, if you're going to take your time, there's been no roll required, but it'll take a few hours to read it. Well, I am. Um, I feel. I feel a bit. I am feeling a little bit sort of foolish and um, uh, ashamed of like what's just taken place. So I think I might suggest to the others that I might, I might say I, I. I feel this book is. Um, maybe has some significance to this case. This clearly was the book that, uh, that Cornthwaite took. There's the last book he took from the library and this looks very well read, has his name in. Um, I, I would like to study this in um, some detail, if you don't mind. Why don't I um, sit down and yeah. look through it and leave you to... Uh, Continue your search through the house. You know I'll be here, and uh, m- m- Mr. Uh, Palmer, you've taken my bags that you obviously feel is uh, <laughs> I'm not safe to be left with. And no, I, no, Doug, I understand. Doug, I given, just, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I think you may have had, you know, enough for now. Um, no, I, 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 and I quite, I quite agree. So, uh, as I say, I feel a little ashamed of um, my actions just now. It's not how I wish to carry myself, and uh, maybe I should just have some quiet time with a book and a cigarette. We all have our moments, <laughs> um, Madame Damien. No, would you mind uh, maybe staying with the doc for a couple of minutes? I'll, I'll clean out the last couple of rooms on the, the ground floor. Well, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel about you being on your own, Mr. Palmer. Oh, I can handle myself. No, no please, I, I don't need to be, um, I don't need to be um, ba- babysat. I'm okay. quite all right. Okay. Well, I, um, I, I pocket the letter opener, but try and do it subtly. Um, and I've got the bag, so I take that with me. And I say, uh, okay, Doc, well, yeah, rest up. Um, rest the best cure, my mother always said. Uh, so, uh... I, I walk with, um... Palmer to the door, uh, mm. and and then I fall into his arms in a swoon. Ah, jeez, you all right there, Russell? Well, I'm so sorry. I think it was the sight of all that blood. Do you know? What? I might just sit down, and then I look at you, Palmer, with an intense gaze of. I might just sit down for a moment. It might not be such a bad idea to stay with the doctor. Of course, um, Doc. I mean, you'll keep an eye on uh, Miss Damien here, won't you? I think she's feeling a bit faint. Of course, of course. It'll just be a moment. Perhaps if I could just have a little nip of something that... Uh, how much have you got that left? Uh, of oh. that left, Doctor? Absolutely, there is enough for you to have a little nip. And I will be your knight in shining armour. 
and okay, I great. take out my Luger and put it very meaningfully on the desk in front of me. Um, and I, I have Ooh. <laughs> cigarettes, Luger, book, vodka. I, I fish around in the bag and I want to find something along the lines of like smelling salts or something. <laughs> just like if there's anything <laughs> like that, just pop them down and be like, uh, okay, I, I'll only be two seconds. I'll, I'll come check in and. I'll take them and I'll, I'll put them in my pocket. And I, uh, I leave the room, and as soon as I turn the corner, I've got my rosaries in my hand again. I'm saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee, bless thou, thou woman, and bless thou, woman, with thy. So the two of you that are left in the room, um, are you? Do you want to? Do you want to try a roll on this to see if you can skim it in an hour? I'd like to. I think I'd like to. So what are my options? Skim it or read it? You can read it without a roll, but it'll take much longer. Or you can skim it. It'll take about an hour, but you'll need to pass an English language roll. But I'll give you a bonus die for the the concentrating power of the pain in your hand. Great. I will attempt that then. Hey, kids. Finding revision tough? Stab yourself in the hand and take some mescaline. <laughs> Stab yourself in the hand with a letter opener. <laughs> take, take some coke, some amphetamine, <laughs> some mescaline. <laughs> few facts. Everyone will be doing it on campus next year. <laughs> oh, it's all the rage. It'll be a you state of it. Better than Tide Pods. Yeah, yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, they do taste nice. Okay. Right, so minty fresh. Uh, I'm going to spend some luck. I'm going to spend. Oh, that's a lot of luck. But I, can't, I don't think I can afford to push anything anymore. It's going very, very bad. Your pushes have been drugs bad. And I only. I think he only knows one way how to push things, and he's taken all his drugs. Oh, unless I dig my thumb into the wound in my hand, like as you suggested. Or you could run over to the window and smash that with your fist. Cut yourself with the glass a bit. Maybe I do want to. If I push it, I can't use luck on it, can I? Or can I? No, you can't. Okay, I'm going to spend my luck now, even though it's quite a lot of luck. I'm going to spend 13 points of luck. Oh, that's, that's, that's doable. Yeah. It's doable. So it's safe. I haven't spent any luck yet. I mean, what are you on? What are you on after that? Uh, I'm now on 40. It's fine. Ah, it's not like. You're laughing. Um, People start. So, yeah. yes, so I have passed my, my English language role. It's not his first language, remember. Well, I'll tell you a few things um, in a second. Yeah. Uh, first, let's see where Sebastian... Is Is Rose doing anything while she's in that room? Is that with the doctor? I think for the, for the first 15 minutes, she's just watching him to make sure that things are okay. Fine. Uh, but after 15 minutes, I think she'll probably get up and start looking through the rest of the um, study to see if there's anything else of any value. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Rose can give me a spot hidden roll. That's a zero one. If it's oh. in if it's in here, I found it. The mother load. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. That's my two best rolls. You, uh, do you know what? You might have you might have found it even if it's not in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously I will stray over to the door and like look in <laughs> corridors at a distance. See if there's anything we missed. Because I am bored. Some major clue in a different room may have rematerialized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a tiger. Trapped in a tiny study, <laughs> looking to drink all the water in the tap. <laughs> a tentacle-headed old one emerges. <laughs> um, I go completely insane. <laughs> so I'll deal with what you actually find in a moment. So where does um where where does uh, Sebastian Palmer go? Um, so I want to go to the right first. That seems most appropriate because there's that room bottom right corner that we've not been in, right? So the f- the first door on your right yeah. come out of the study. Okay. So the dining room's opposite so you... us, and then I want to go. Yeah. 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 So this room that you walk into, it's, it's quite a large room, and it is filled with junk. It, it seems to be used being used as some sort of storeroom. There's boxes, barrels, crates all piled up in big sort of like little mounds all, all around the room, all up the walls. Um uh the f- the in the center of the floor there's a large area that looks a bit moldy um a void yeah what do you do um i want to just like do, do a circuit of the room i'm going to open the blinds there's three windows right so i'm going to go around yeah. opening the shutters as i've done in every other room what's your size 60 so um can and- you give me a jump roll please <laughs> oh shit where's my jump Oh, it's all. Oh, it's not all right. It's shit. Um, mm, I failed. Literally, you've both had jump rolls. Um, you walk. You walk blithely across the middle of the room uh, to the to to open the shutters, and you suddenly hear this splintering of wood, uh, and this sort of 
crunch and then you realise the floor is is just caves in underneath you. Um, you try to leap, um, smack the side of the, of the remaining floor and fall through, uh, landing you in a heap in pitch darkness. Oh. And you take... <laughs> now, now's, now's not the time to be finickety about saying I would do a perimeter of the room, but then I blithely walk to the centre, but that's fine. Um, maybe it's rotted throughout. <laughs> well, you said you went and opened the thing. Yeah, that's true. It is, it is. Yeah. It is. yeah. I'm just uh, scared, that's all. <laughs> it's going to be fucking Audrey 2 down there. I've got even worse news for you. You lose five hit points in the fall. <gasps> Oh, oh, that's bad. Fall very badly. You fall, you fall, sort of on your knee. Oh, not on the knee. Anything on the knee is terrible. Gonna smart in the morning. Yeah. If we see the morning, I don't think I will be. How far did he fall? Quite, quite far. Yeah. Um, and and you fall onto your knees onto a pile of coal. Uh, um, oh, fucking hell. <clears throat> and, which you roll down and then bang into the into the wall. Um. It's 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 a bit damp in here as well. There's um, huh, that's a surprise. There's water damage uh, all up the wall. The walls are cold, cold and clammy and wet. Um, and now you're, there's also a pile of debris from the collapsed ceiling above you. Okay. Um, it's a small room with um, a door in the north wall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, Rose and uh, the doctor can give me a listen roll. Ah, well, I'm good at listening. Moments before, I've, ju- I've just said, oh, and, and I meant to mention to him that I'm a little concerned about those vines we saw climbing up from the cellar. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> no. My dice are loaded. I've just rolled a zero four. 4 What the fuck is oh, going on? I, I mean, this is, this is my lucky die, but that's my second zero four 4 of the night, guys. I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous. Should I, st- should I start recording yeah. them? I can record them if you like. Can you load my dice? You're loaded enough, Doctor. Yeah. Um, what did you get, Dan? Well, I fail, regular fail. Oh, oh, fine. So you're so absorbed in this book, you don't you don't hear anything. Yeah, figures. Rose, on the other hand, you've um, you've been looking through the room. You um, you open a drawer and you you're, you take out um, a flyer. It looks like a very old flyer, and it's inviting people to attend to to come to an expedition or to apply to be part of an expedition in South America. Um, it's from a few years ago. Uh, uh, an expedition in um, in Peru, and it's being led by. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> you guessed it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Augustus Larkin. No, uh, no. Uh, no more Santi, right? That's, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I don't. It's fine. No, it's Joseph fine. Chance rolls Santi. We roll yeah. Santi. I'm, I'm, un- I'm not just getting deja vu. I'm just getting the shits up me. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible expression. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, and it's paper clipped to um, uh, a slip of paper with some notes. It's just little dates of, um, you know, when the expedition was meant to start, uh, when uh, when they set off from um, Lima, when they were meant to arrive in Puno, um, other details, little details, names. There's a list of names. And then you hear in the next room, you hear this, and this, literally seconds after finding that. Yeah. Oh, nice. Ah, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I I stand to my full six foot six, uh, and... (laughs) You're getting taller and taller. (laughs) My full eight foot nine. I think I make a a height up every time, don't I? Seven foot nine. Uh, six foot two. Six foot two, I think. Nine. If you were seven foot nine, people would have to roll sanity. I mean, it's borderline as it is. Playing a Stephen Merchant. Every time you describe her, you add some more, like, (laughs) detail that just raises questions. I just imagine that she just doesn't walk like a human. She just, like, lunges everywhere. Pirouettes. Like, I've got a really weird image of her. She is odd. It's really disturbing. Very suspiria. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But also, okay, you've rumbled me, guys. I don't know who this person is. She's just... Just a bunch of freakish, freakish attributes <laughs> that I've thrown together. I love it. Dice was so I, love it. <laughs> I think. I think anyway. she, t- she she swings dramatically like a mutated spaniel uh, <laughs> towards the doctor who isn't reacting, and she says, "Doctor, did you hear that?" I did. I don't even hear you ask me that. <laughs> um, and, and and with that sort of moment, I think she she decides 
unconsciously aware that everything could pivot on this moment, but unfortunately that's the kind of moment that is really attracts Rosalie Damien. She tosses the flyer onto the onto the desk uh, and uh, says, I'll be right back. I think I heard some. And then she's out of the door, dashing over to where she thinks she heard the sound last. Well, with your extreme success, um, it takes you straight into the room next door. And as you step through, you see that it is, um, as I described, a, full of junk and boxes and um, piles of crates. And in the middle of the room, um, uh, a large hole uh, that stretches so far that even if you were walking around the perimeter of the room, you'd fall into it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, that's how it's done. Nicely done. I'll well, just make some notes there. <laughs> So yeah, and and, uh, and is Larkin in the room? Can I see Larkin? Oh no, uh, different. <sighs> just a little flashback. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> uh, so I look. Uh, I, I think. I think I hiss. Palmer, Palmer, are you down there? Do I hear this? Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. I think at that moment I look into the darkness of this pit, uh, but the fact that the very ground can give way underneath you. I have a real sense of the of the way in which the the floor supports the dancer, and I no longer have access to that floor. In my mind's eye, I'm imagining whether I can jump the whole distance from this side of the gaping black miasmic moor into the below, and reach the other side in a single bound. And I know that I can't, but I also know that uh, I also know that there's something horrible about a mouth that goes into the ground and although i've heard this yes come up from sebastian palmer i i I also become aware that in that moment everything is changing about how i feel about this house and i now wish to understand whether the doctor is right whether there is a ghost here because i because i'm thinking there might be because my mama used to talk about ghosts she said that she saw one once in a, in, a, in a blue ball, a haze of light leading out across the bayou. Uh, and she followed it at a time, and, but she didn't find nothing at the end of that trail. And the story always said that you would. Others, of course, say that it's just marsh light. It's just gases being released and, and being lit by the energy of some such. <laughs> I ain't no geologian. I guess... Although I'm, I'm wanting to help Palmer, I'm, I'm transfixed in that moment. And then, and then I come to myself and I remember where I am. And I look around me amongst the crates and objects to see whether there's anything that I can throw down to him. But even as I'm doing that, there's a, there's a hesitancy that I find. Because I remember that room full of idols. And I remember that it's the first time in so many, many months, years even that I haven't just picked something up and taken it. Sure, since I came down, I, I did, but in that moment up there, I was so I was so held by this place. I was so held by that lamp going out. It was the lamp going out in the cupboard. Did somebody blow it out? These old houses have drafts. They, that's where ghosts come from, isn't it? Why would it mention the uniform? It's so specific. The doctor might be mad, of course. It does occur to me that the doctor may be very mad. I've seen mad people before in my time. My mom was mad towards the end. And that's the sadness. The thought that we can't always keep ourselves in our own mind, in our right mind, whatever that might be. But again, sometimes you got to feel that to make the jump. Maybe if you go totally mad, you might make the jump from one side of a gaping maw to the other. Just maybe. Uh, but she comes to herself and uh, she's, she's looking for something like a rope or a, or a, or a curtain that's draped over one of these uh, boxes. Do you think I'm going to roll my luck to see if I can find something like that? Uh, yeah, let's have a luck roll. I think I might have failed that. It's so close i got to check. Ah, oh, sons of guns. Well, that's a fail. 
There's nothing of any use. Yeah, you scour the room. There's there's nothing you can make a decent rope. Well, nothing that I can reach safely. Maybe there's something on the, on the other side. Temptingly. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a yeah, a single dust. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. I mean, how, how yeah, big how yeah. big a jump is that? Because mm. she has been standing there thinking about how big a jump that is. Desperate to use the jump. I love it. It's four yards. Easy. So basically, as long as one of my legs. <laughs> She steps over it. <laughs> Mutant. Uh, no, she's not going to jump there. <laughs> she's not going to jump there. I think, I think she says... She may be being unreasonable. Maybe it's, maybe it's more like three yards. Ooh. Well, that's doable, isn't it? For her? I don't know. I thought so. I've only got to jump 50%. I could dance my way across it, maybe. Yeah, three yards. Dance 70. Jump. I mean, you could dance into it. Yeah, pretty easy. <laughs> I think I dash back to the doctor. Uh, no, I think I say, Sebastian, I'll, I'll get the doctor. Okay. Wait there. I uh, Yeah. Yeah, you bet. Is it a luck roll to see if the flashlight in my pocket is broken or? Um, no, I think I think it's probably fine. Okay, um, that's me being generous to your crueler. I was going to say, but that that means uh, he wants you to see something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so in which case, I like ah, I'm like my knees are fucked, and I'm I'm sort of I'm propped up against the wall. I sort of rolled down the coal or whatever it was, and like kunk into the wall. So mm. is that right? So I um. Mm. I want to, yeah, I want to take the flash out of my pocket and get it going and just scan my immediate vicinity. I assume there's no light except from the dim light from the hole above that I fell through. Uh, correct. And you didn't you didn't get a chance to um, open the shutters there either. No, that's right. It's I was a bit gloomier in that room. Yeah. So um, basically, let's fuck all light. Okay, good. <laughs> so there is a door in the north wall, like I said. So you're sort of over to one side, but you could reach it relatively easily. Mm. How many hit points have you got left, by the way? Four. Oh, was that a major wound you took there? Well, uh, oh, oh, God. How, was it more how than much? half your hit? Well, it was five. It's, it's more than half. So is that a major wound? Yeah, so you, you've actually yeah, broken Yeah, my constitution's quite weak. Fuck. So you've broken your leg, and can you can you give me a constitution roll? <laughs> I nearly asked, and then I thought, oh, he's a tough character. Well, he's strong, but the burns and everything, and the he's, he's another quite... glass cannon. Another glass cannon. I play glass cannons constantly. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a fail, a bad fail, not a fumble. But you you see the door, and uh, the pain is. As you try to move towards it, you, you, that's when you realise your leg's broken and it's ex, it's actually excruciating. Um, <sighs> and you suddenly feel very lightheaded. And you hear Rose walk away to go and get the doctor. Uh, and in your blurred vision, you see the door and you see something coming under it. <gasps> oh, fuck. Something moving slow and grey. Oh! Just as everything goes black. This was an Apocalypse Players production. For more information about the podcast, go to apocalypseplayers.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>